Believers should learn to separate their careers from the ministry. They are not the same. I'm doing ministry by playing football. What was that? Ministry is with words. Ministry is done with words. We will speak. Now, obviously, because we will speak, you must know. You must know. You must learn. Speaking is the baseline of ministry. Persecutions would arise because of the word. Persecutions would arise because of the word. So he says, sanctify the Lord in your heart and be ready to give an answer to everyone that asks you. What is the hope? Why are you confident about this hope? Why are you confident about Christ? Why are you confident about the gospel? Why are you confident about the redemptive work? You must be able to give concise and precise answers to these questions. That is the fruit of maturity. Don't be a Christian who goes to church to dance. Say, I'm going there to dance. I'm going there to shake my body for my God. That is foolish Christianity. Very foolish. Christianity is about learning. It's about being grounded in the truth. It's about being an excellent expositor of the riches of our redemption. Very important. Hallelujah. So wake up. He says, that's how you do it. You sanctify the Lord in your heart. And for people lifting up hands and for people dancing and rolling around in church and rolling on the floor. But if that's all you do in church, you are all men most miserable. The primary reason why we gather together in the local assembly is so that we can be taught God's word. It's so that we can be taught God's word. The role of a pastor over the flock of Jesus is to feed them. Not to dash them things. Not to tell them you will get there and everybody is screaming amen. That's what is making Christians dull. Because they are not paying attention to the realities that they ought to pay attention to. When a man does diligently what he should not have done at all, he has labored in vain. Wake up. You see, the master is the one that dictates the ministry. You don't, you don't decide the ministry. The ministry has been stipulated in scriptures. Go into the world, preach the gospel. Go into and make disciples of nations. Feed my sheep. Feed the flock. Take oversight. That's what your pastor is also to do. To teach you God's word. To expose you to the realities of Christ. To train you for the work of the ministry. To distract you from the distractions that are in the world. Not to provide distractions. Not to entertain your carnality. No, Charles Spurgeon, one of the loveliest preachers I've read about, he said a time will come in the church. Rather than the church having shepherds feeding the sheep, we would have clowns entertaining the goats. And he was a beautiful preacher, one of the beautiful preachers in the, I think, the 17th century or thereabout. Today, that statement he said can be found all around us. I don't know about wherever you're hearing this teaching from, but where I come from in Africa, we have clowns. Many of them are clowns entertaining goats. He says we have clowns entertaining the goats. And so, you know, as, a, as an individual, for example, I, I made up my mind that I would not be a clown in the ministry. And no good will be comfortable around me. And you listening to me is test is testament of your desire, of your desire to improve and get better in the doctrine of Jesus in the ministry of Christ. Hallelujah. So ministry is about words. So you must be, you must know the doctrine. You must know it. You must be established in the mystery of Christ. Paul said to those people in Colossians, he said that you will know accurately and thoroughly. You must know accurately and thoroughly. And when Paul and Peter and John spoke in, in Acts chapter 4, they must say they took knowledge of them. That these people don't really, they are ignorant and unlearned. I mean that they were not, they were not schooled in their school of discipleship, the school of discipleship of the Pharisees. These guys did not graduate from our schools. 
But when, how did they know these things? What, what gave them the audacity to speak this way? He said they had been with Jesus. Hallelujah. See, spiritual growth is the only proof to show that we have been with Jesus. We will speak the way he speaks. We will talk, defend his message the way he defended his message. Hallelujah. That said for, for an amazing time. So just follow carefully, follow carefully. So ministry is about words. It's about words. So a minister of the gospel, which you are, if you're born again, yeah, you're a minister of the gospel. Don't be surprised. You're a minister of the gospel. So a minister of the gospel that you are will pay attention to the doctrine. To pay attention to his doctrine. What have you understood about Christ? What have you understand, uh, understood about his coming? His death, his resurrection, his ascension to the Father's right hand. What have you understood about the ministry that has been committed to us? To us? And these are the things that we will be having discussions around in this um, YouTube broadcasts. So I would encourage you to do the need. Click on the like um, notification, subscribe, and put on the notification that whenever we come online, whenever we post online, you're there to receive it and to listen to it, not just receive and listen to it and pay attention to it. God bless you. Now in Acts chapter 5, after they had released them, the disciples, I mean they threatened them and released them. In Acts chapter 5, verse 27, and when they had brought them, they sent them before they, so they captured them again. I mean they released them in chapter 4. They captured them again in chapter 5. Ah, because they could not but speak. He was thinking about recently that if if someone were to stop me from preaching the gospel, ah, I will look for a place to go and scream. Because God's word is like fire in our bones. We cannot but speak. Look at that. I mean, they were arrested in chapter 4, interrogated in chapter 4, and then released after being threatened in chapter 4. In chapter 5, these guys did not stop. In fact, right from chapter 4, they were still speaking. You cannot shut a man that is convinced up. So the reason why people are economical with their ministry and they are micromanaging the ministry of Christ is because what they think is the ministry has not yet become a persuasion and conviction in their hearts. And it's my prayer that this series of teaching and explanations will, will burn like fire in your heart. That you will not be able to hold your peace. But you will proclaim on the mountaintops and upon the hilltops, the housetops, everywhere that Jesus saves. You will speak it boldly and you explain the reason for your hope. You will speak it forth with proper explanations. Glory to God. So, in verse 27 of that, Acts chapter 5, it says, when they had brought them, they set them before the council. And the high priest asked them, saying, did we not straightly command you that you should not teach in this name? And behold, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and they tend to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Peter answered with the other apostles and said, we ought to obey God rather than man. <laughs> See, rest for We've got to obey God rather than man. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you slew us and hanged on a tree. Him, God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses of this. Is also the Holy Ghost, whom God has given to them that obey him. Then says, when they heard that they were caught to the heart and took counsel, to slay them. Hallelujah. Or we'll kill them. We'll kill these guys. And that's, that's, that's the spirit of persecution. When they try to threaten you to stop speaking, and they find that you cannot, you, you, you are not willing to stop speaking, they move to threats. Let's try to kill you. Let's try to kill you. And then Jesus gave, there's an answer to that too. You know, Jesus gave, he said, when they persecute you in this city, you flee to another city. When they threaten you with death, you pack your shoe and run. Run to another city. Run to another village. But you see, don't stop preaching. <laughs> don't stop doing ministry. You run. We know how to run. Yes. As we are running, anybody we find running with us, we preach to the best. Are you saved? <laughs> have you learned? Have you met Christ? Do you know who Jesus is? I mean, we, we are running and we are preaching. We are not to stand there and face the people and collect the bullets. No, you run. Speak to your legs. And then you run. And get to another city. And then you start preaching again. One thing is certain. The message must not be stopped. We must not be silent. If this street persecutes us, we go to another street. If this house throws us out, we knock on the next door. 
Hallelujah. So, a good student of the word must prioritize listening. You must pay attention to God's word. Reading, because, because the ministry of Christ has to do with words. So, you must prioritize listening. You must prioritize reading. Paying attention to God's word. Because see, it, when you are speaking, you are not learning. It takes being in silence to learn. You don't learn anything new when you talk. You learn when you hear and when you read. So, a student of God's word would prioritize reading. He will prioritize listening. Very important because you see, we cannot do anything in the ministry outside the words. Outside the words. So learn the words. Learn it accurately. And so we've, we've, had some, we've had some episodes in the past. If you're hearing, joining in for the first time, this is not the first teaching. Go to the previous teachings. They're just, they're, they're broken into bits. Watch them all. Listen. Take your notes. Write. If you have questions, uh, uh, hit us in our email. We'll get back to you with answers to your questions. Hallelujah. In John chapter 7. John chapter 7 verse 45. I'll read it down to 53. It says, Then came the officers to the chief priests and Pharisees, and they said unto them, Why have you not brought them? So the Pharisees are sent men to arrest Jesus. He sent men to arrest Jesus. And then when the Pharisees, and the officers, rather, those men came back to the, to the Pharisees and the chief priests, without Jesus. So they asked them, why have you not brought him? I like the response. I've always loved this response for years. I like the way King James puts it. It's always very, very intriguing. It's very sweet. The officers answered, never man spoke like this man. I mean, they sent, they sent soldiers to arrest Jesus. And the soldiers were dumbfounded at the kind of utterances that proceeded from his mouth. Said, I mean, they went back to the ascendants. Go back to Senda. <laughs> they went back to the ascenders and said, Never man spoke like this man. I like the way he says, Never man. Like, no one speaks like this. He's, this guy is on is unarrestable. Unarrestable. Never man spoke like that. I mean, they were so intrigued at the way he spoke. Hallelujah. <laughs> then the Pharisees got angry. You know, it's, it's funny about persecution. That the same doctrine, the same teaching that is taught to a group of people that intrigues them gets to another set of people and it offends them. Yeah, same word. So, ten people are in the meeting and five are wise and five are foolish. You know, five get the word and they are intrigued about God's word. Another set is hearing the same thing and they're like, what is going on? What is he saying? What is he saying? What is he saying? Oh, I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg. Me, I want to dance on my God, Jerry. You know, he just in, insists on his own heart. You know, Proverbs say, trust in the Lord in your, with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. You see, we, 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 we approach the Lord with the intention to get better. We get better. I say, ah, this is what they've taught me in my church. This is when I grew up, I don't understand what. Oh God, just check this thing from scriptures. Is what is is what is is the teaching correct? Is the explanations correct? That's what you should focus on. There's no number of years you've gone in the wrong path that makes it right. No, you have to move away from the path that is wrong to start walking in the path that is right. It's just plain simple. So the Pharisees said, <laughs> "Are you also deceived?" Imagine. I mean, the, the reply, the, the guys who were intrigued, said, are you also deceived? Have any of the rulers of the Pharisees believed on him? You know, that one is, is the person who asked that question is oblivious that there were people among the Pharisees who had believed. <laughs> but, you know, obviously, they, they were all believing codedly. People like Nicodemus and the rest of them. They were obedient to the faith, but were secret. The secret disciples of Jesus. So, as I said, have, you, have any of the rulers of the, of the Pharisees believed on him? But these people who knows not the law are cursed. Very angry. Now, one of them who believed on Jesus was speaking of verse 15. Nicodemus said unto them, Doth our Lord judge any man before he hears him 
and knows what he does. So this is the language of someone who believes in him. He was trying to, to he was hiding, coded, you know, he's disguising, he's in the Pharisees, the, the community of the Pharisees, but he doesn't want them to know that he has believed on Jesus. So he's like, okay, does our law condemn a man? Because uh, normally you're supposed to hear from the condemned, from the con from the accused rather, before you can now condemn him. That's the law. And it is in the mouth of two or three witnesses. You know? So he said, does our Lord judge a man before it hears him and knows what he does? Now look at the, 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 the illiterate response, the insincere response they gave to Nicodemus. They answered, are you also of Galilee? Search and look. For out of Galilee arise no prophets. Imagine the, 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 the weak arguments. Very weak. Thinking about it right now is even making me feel weak. <laughs> Very weak. Say, check. Check. Look at it. No prophet has ever risen from Galilee. Does, what does that even mean? What does, what does that mean? You know, that's, that's the voice of insincerity. That's the language of dishonesty. So, we must learn how to speak. So Paul prayed for those in Laodicea. Let's read again at Colossians 2. I'm reading that amplified version again. For my concern is that their hearts, Colossians 2 verse 2, I'm reading the amplified version. For my concern is that their hearts may be braced, comforted, cheered, and encouraged as they are knit together in love that they may come to have all their abounding wealth and blessings of assured conviction of understanding and that they may become progressively more intimately acquainted. Progressively. I like that. More intimately acquainted. I may know more definitely. This is, this is it. What are you to be acquainted with? What are you to progressively become more intimate with? What are you supposed to know more definitely and accurately? He's speaking about words. And what is that? He says that mystic secret of God, which is Christ. The doctrine of Christ. The message of Christ. Or well, let me put that as Paul we call it the revelation of Jesus. He says you are supposed to know it correctly, accurately, and progressively. And thoroughly. And Paul prayed that prayer. It's my prayer for you also. That your heart would absorb richly. And progressively. And get intimately acquainted. And you will know definitely and thoroughly and accurately. And definitely. Christ. In the series of the teachings that we, we've done. And the one we are set to do. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for listening to today's broadcast. We trust you were blessed by the teaching. For further inquiries about learning Christ with Pastor Temidayo Jolayemi, do well to drop us a mail on Church at gmail.com. We will be glad to answer your questions. Till the next broadcast, we see Jesus.